We have a question here on work energy and power from the final examination November 2020. Um, the first thing I like doing is reading through the question and jot down all the information I think would help me in answering the question. So I'll just go ahead and do that. So it says a roller coaster car of mass 200 kg. Um, so I'm gonna jot down the mass we have is 200 kg um, with the engine switched off travels along track A, B, C which has a rough surface so I know that there's some frictional force because it's said to be a rough surface as shown in the diagram below there's the diagram right there on the left at point A which is 10 meters above the ground so we have point A which is 10 meters above the ground um, the speed of the car is 4 meters per second so we have V equals to 4 meters per second um, at point B which is a height H so at point B we have a height which is unknown X meters uh, so to say um, the speed of the car is 2 meters per second, so we have V, which is equals to 2 meters per second. Uh, during the motion from point A to point B, uh, 3.4 times 10 to the 3 joules of energy is used to overcome friction. Um, so work done by friction or to overcome friction is 3.4 times 10 to the three joules. Um, the first question says, define the term non-conservative force. So we have conservative and non-conservative force, right? Um, so let's, let me write that down there, conservative um, force. The work um, done by a conservative force uh, is independent of the path taken independent of path um, and as you have guessed uh, uh, non-conservative force uh, yeah non-conservative force the work done is dependent of path work done dependent of path um, let me just write that down. Um, there we have it. So the question says non-conservative force. So you would write that the work done by a non-conservative force is um, dependent of path uh, forces like friction. Um, 5.2. Calculate the change in kinetic energy of the car after it has traveled from point A to B. Uh, this is quite straightforward. So point A is our starting point and point B is our ending point. At point A, like we jotted down when we were writing the given information, we have 4 meters per second and at point B, we have 2 meters per second. So we know that kinetic energy is given by 1 over 2 mv squared. Uh, the change in kinetic energy, which is what we're interested in, is given by 1 over 2 m velocity final squared minus velocity initial squared um, the mass is given as 200 kg so we're going to have 1 over 2 multiplied by 200 um, vf is 2 meters per second so we're going to have 2 squared subtracted by 4 squared um, 1 over 2 multiplied by 200 this is just going to give us um, 100 and then q squared uh, that's for this two it's not on the outside it's on and then we're going to subtract 16. Uh, this is just going to be 100 uh, multiplied by minus 12 so this is minus 1200 joules uh, so that's the change in kinetic energy uh, minus 1200 joules uh, let's move ahead and go to 5.3 Use energy principle to calculate height H. Um, there's three equations 
that should come to your head when you hear energy principle um, is that uh, E mechanical energy uh, the mechanical energy um, at some initial point is equals to uh, the E mechanical dot 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 at some final point um, the, other, the other energy principle is that work uh, net is given by changing EK uh, work non-conservative is given by changing EK plus changing potential energy um, EP right so whenever we have a question that is saying uh, use energy principle uh, we're going to use one between the three of these equations if you use any you are going to get the answer actually uh, I'm going to use the first one and I'd ask you guys to try using the other equations and post your um, answers in the comment um, so E mechanical energy initially uh, we have uh, EK which is the kinetic energy and then we have um, EP which is the potential energy um, and then this is sort of an unusual case because we have friction that is opposing so here we're supposed to also have um, the work done by the friction like we stated there right and then on this other side um, there's nothing about the rough surface so we are going to have um, energy kinetic uh, plus energy potential only um, so if we didn't have friction while going down uh, from point A then we were not going to have this work done by friction right um, so let's go ahead and sub that at point A we know that we have 1 over 2 200 kg uh, the velocity is 4 squared uh, plus EP that is mass uh, which is 200 multiplied by gravity which is 9,8 and then multiplied by the height which is 10 uh, plus the work um, that is done to overcome the friction uh, it is given as uh, 3.4 times 10 to the 3 joules um, but then because um, friction opposes the motion uh, we're supposed to put it with a minus sign right uh, that is negative work so we're gonna have minus 3.4 times 10 to the 3 um, it goes to EK at point B uh, 1 over 2 um, the mass is 2000 kg um, the speed is 2 squared uh, plus mgh the mass is 2000 a true and right amount uh, gravity is 9,8 and the height is what we are interested in um, so sorry for that let me just bring that back um, there we have it uh, let's move ahead so now we basically done with the physics uh, we sort of uh, now doing the math right uh, so let me put everything on the left hand side on the calculator and see what we have so we're going to have 1 over 2 multiplied by 200 uh, the velocity squared plus the potential energy uh, multiplied by 10 uh, minus 3,4 times 10 to the 3 uh, on the left hand side we're going to have 1,000 we're going to have 17,800 and then on the right hand side we're going to have um, 1 over 2 multiplied by 200 will give us 100 100 multiplied by 4 this is going to give us 400 uh, plus um, let me put that in the concrete 200 um, multiplied by 9,8 uh, 1,900 um, 1960 multiplied by h uh, we're going to take this 400 to the other side and divide by 1960 so this would imply that our height 
is 17,800 um, minus the 400 we talked about divided by divided by um, oh, I'm so sorry for that divided by 1,960 right um, let me put that in the calculator we have 17,800 uh, minus 400 uh, divided by 1960 and um, our age is therefore 8.8775 meters right um which makes sense uh, point b looks to be slightly below point a um let's move ahead um like I said, please use this equation, um, use this other equation too, and tell me if you get the same thing. Uh, you should get the same thing. Um, 5.4, on reaching point B, the car engine is switched off, is switched on in order to move up the incline uh, to point C, which makes sense, which is 22 meters above the ground, so we know that uh, we have a height of 22 meters above the ground at point C. Uh, the car travels at travels for 15 seconds, so we have T equals to 15 seconds. Um, the speed is constant, is given as 2 meters per second. Uh, average frictional force is given as 15 newton. The question says, calculate the power delivered by the engine to move the car from point B to C. So what is power? Power is the rate at which work is done. So that will be work divided by T. Um, if you remember, we had an equation above that says that work done by non-conservative forces is equals to the change in kinetic energy plus the change in potential energy so what are the uh, non-conservative forces that are acting on the object uh, we have the work done by the engine um, which is dependent of the path and then the work done uh, by friction and then uh, changing ek is 1 over 2 m uh, vf squared minus vi squared um, plus uh, m g uh, h final minus h initial so let's go ahead and sub that work done by the engine is what you're interested in so we're gonna have work done by engine plus work done by friction the frictional the constant frictional force is given as 50 newtons so we're going to have 50 uh, and then the question to ask is what's delta x um, if you read the question attentively uh, it is said that uh, it travels for 15 seconds right at a speed of 2 meters per second uh, if you remember from uh, grade 10 <laughs> distance is given by speed multiplied by time so we're going to have 2 multiplied by 15 which is equals to 30 meters right uh, so that's what we're going to put in there so we're going to have 30 meters uh, cos of 180 that's always the angle for friction uh, it goes to let me just erase that real quick it goes to changing kinetic energy so we have 1 over 2 uh, 200 um, the velocity final is 2 meters per second minus the velocity initial 2 meters per second squared uh, because it says it, it is moving at a constant speed right and then the change in potential energy we have the mass of 200 kg we have 9,8 for gravity uh, height final is 22 height initial is what we calculated 8.8 seven seven five um eight uh point eight seven seven five i hope you can see that so now let me 
put these numbers in the calculator uh, we have uh, 50 multiplied by 30 and then multiply by negative 1 this is just gonna give us minus uh, 1500 um, equals to and then now I do the right hand side um, the kinetic the changing kinetic energy is gonna fall off so there's no need to put that minus multiply by 9,8 um, the change in height 22 minus 8 comma 8775 and then this gives us um 25720.1 so work done by the engine equals to uh 2257 um actually 25720.1 plus 1500 uh you add that to and you get uh, let me do that real quick um, plus 1500 you get 27,220.1 um, um, joules right uh, the SI unit for work and then um, let's move ahead then the question said the power done by the engine light so we're going to have uh, the work which we just calculated uh, 0.1 um, divided by the time in seconds uh, it's 15 seconds uh, and that gives us just wait a second let me put that in the calculator 27220.1 divided by 15 that gives us 1814 uh, 0.67 joules per second or watts right um that is it for this question um you can play it back uh, try doing these questions by yourself before you see how i do it um the question you might be asking yourself right now is when do we use which equation and that's a very valid question i think that's the difficult stuff to figure out um, I'm going to do a separate video on that, so make sure you subscribe so that you don't miss out.